Hi friends, welcome back to Laura B. Gardening. It's my one year anniversary being on YouTube and I wanted to thank all my wonderful gardeners out there that have supported me through this process. Without you guys, I probably wouldn't have continued. Um, you guys have honestly inspired me and all your wonderful comments have kept me going and I just been so blessed and I wanted to thank you for allowing me to come into your living room to watch me to take time out of a busy day to look at my garden. Um, so I did want to show you I'm doing a garden tour more in the evening because I wanted to show how the light comes in and how everything shines. So probably right behind me on probably your right side, my left side, my right side, your left side, you see the flamethrower red bush, red bud tree in its beautiful form she is so magnificent so beautiful and that is what i want that lively area for the bistro area is to just have full of colors and just because that's an area where you're going to be so you know enjoying people festivities music um that's the vibe i want for down there across the way from me will be my healing garden but before we go that way i have a couple things i wanted to tell you guys First, you probably see that I am underneath an arbor. So we literally just put this arbor today. My husband was awesome to do it for me. Um, we bought two, and a, two additional arbors to extend so the roses have more area. So it's a walkway through here and kind of a sweet little tunnel of roses to go into the shade garden and into that little garden there of the peonies and um, the delphiniums that are blooming right now so let me show you that and then we're going to head to the healing garden but like i said i do want to show you i fell in love with this classic i've never read it before um if you would have showed it to me maybe 15 years ago i'd be like i don't want to read that book it has nothing to do with me it honestly resonated with me like if this was me in the book like i was mary in this book so if you guys could if you guys are like me when you run into the garden see what is blooming you will resonate with this book and feel like they're writing about you so the best classic the best book that I have read regarding the garden how much love and anticipation even for little kids to come out and watch something grow ah, it, it did like it made my heart just just swollen and sore soaring through just the happiness that this book brought so let's start with the tour here so right behind us is the shade garden so I just planted these cucarellas, dulce, wild berry. And I wanted something that kind of brightened up the area because it had a lot of green and some silver, but it was missing some red. I felt like it needed some more depth to it. So I was able to do that with this beautiful purple cucarella. And it pulled, if you notice, it pulls from the actual purple of the painted the Japanese painted fern and oh my gosh during the day you guys it looks so beautiful with all these colors now this is what the garden needed and then once that is all flowering um the oh my goodness. hydrangea hydrangea thank you I I think it's gonna be gorgeous because um, I have two hydrangeas on either side they have pink and then I have the limelight here this is the white one I cannot wait so it's but just the foliage by itself it is so beautiful not all the time do you need flowers because even there is leaves that are so gorgeous that you don't need the flowers to make something so beautiful so that is just just a beautiful little piece back there of, of my shade garden and then to, over here I have this delphin delphinium I wanted to show you look at this color you guys it is a purple here like a very like a violet purple with blue it's very hard to find blue flowers guys look it is a true like a like a royal blue with this they call it santa barbara um sage or or mexican sage it is it complements so well with this little leaves here i mean the little flowers are almost velvety i don't know if you could see they are so soft and so pretty and it's so pretty here this one already faded, but oh my gosh, I fell in love when I see that. It is almost like God just came in here and painted it overnight because those colors are so vibrant that I'm like, oh, that is so beautiful. Just the perfect colors. So as we walk back here, I wanted to show you as you're walking through that like afternoon, that 
kind of that dust hour, that golden hour everybody calls. To me, this is the one of the best times in the garden because there are things that are shining through. There's things that are quieter, which is perfect time to reflect, to look, to just listen to things, watch the hummingbirds because the activity of hummingbirds that I've been having in this garden, I am not lying and Jay can honestly contest to this or not contest, like attest, a, attest to this. Um, they're literally in your face and I'm sometimes worried that they're gonna like hit me in the face and it is so much fun just to see them going back and forth. They have nested here three times. So we're on our third round of babies. So it's been so exciting. And just to sit back here. So come on over here, guys. Come on over here, Jake. So you see, you guys, this is what I want to show you guys. You see the beautiful Dusty Miller silvery and the little violas, that dusty, kind of that periwinkle blue is a great reflection of both colors, a good balance. And that's what I want for this area. More of a quieter, muted area because it is a healing garden. Because here's where I want you to go and sit to the on the bench and read a book or just meditate or listen to the fountains or the birds. This is the space that I wanted. And I was able finally to get that. And this is, I want to bring you guys and have you guys sit there and just listen to all that. And then on the other side of that, so once you're done meditating, it's time to party. So we go down to the bistro area and everything is, all the sweet little flowers, all the violas are in sweet blooms right now. So they're all really happy. And then I have down here, all the baby's breath, all down here that finally spread. And I love just that walkway at night when the lights are lit up, guys. It's so pretty because these almost kind of glow with the light. So you could really see, they almost turn white. So it's kind of like a little pathway down this area. And I love this area. This is one of my favorite areas because I love to sit here, have a cup of coffee, read a book. I could read a book anywhere, to be honest with you. Um, I will put that guy there. And just always, I'm actually always messing with my topiaries. So I'm always cutting them down or cleaning them up or whatever it is I need to do. But if you're sitting here at night, it's so much fun because it's so pretty. All the colors are more lively here. So you have the reds and the purples and the oranges on the trees. So if you see, do you see the flamethrower right there, Jade? Again, this is a lively area. This is where you're gonna, you know, come in with your friends, your loved ones and have music have the bistro lights on. This is a place where I want to gather with my friends and like my loved ones. And so this is a fun area here. Um, I love this topiary. Again, you guys, I love topiaries. <laughs> Whatever I can make it into a topiary, make it into a topiary. She needs, everything needs a little haircut right now. So I will be giving her a haircut really soon. Um, let's come over here. I wanted to show you all the beautiful roses, um, the Coco Loco roses that we're gonna be, that I'm gonna be showing you have been blooming their little heads off. So the Coco Loco roses over here, come on over here, Jade. Start with the most beautiful mocha color. Look at that. And then look at the outer petals, a pink. And then that pink goes into a lavender. So this is the beginning stage of that bloom and then it almost looks like dusty. When it gets hotter, it starts to turn into a lavender, but when it's a little cooler, it's like a like a hot cocoa. And it is so pretty. So I, I love these. I got two of these. Um, I will be moving these over to the front part of the garden, along with, let me show you, all of these here. So all of these here are gonna be going to the front part of the garden. All of these here are climbing Edens. And my idea is to put them all along the white fence and along the arbor. So that's why I'm waiting because we're gonna be doing all that work up there. I'm waiting a couple more weeks, about three more weeks to have them all moved up to the front. So I got a couple more David Austins here. So um, I cannot wait. These are the Olivia Pope roses. So now I don't have anything. They're all in, they're all in bloom. I mean, they're all in bud form, but they're not blooming yet, but they will be soon and I'll be showing you. So come on over here. And then the Partier Garden. 
So we're pulling up some growth guys and I cannot wait when it finally grows to maybe another two and two feet because I want it to be kind of an enclosed area. So it gives you, when it's enclosed, this is what I'm trying to, this is how I'm visualizing this. To give different paths. Which way do you want to go today? Do you want to go to the healing garden? Do you want to go to the garden where it's a lot of just different colors just to see something different? Do you want to go underneath the trellis or the arbor of roses and kind of head to the shade uh, garden? So that's my part is bringing it up so it's kind of a room to go into different rooms. And um, over here, this is more of a colorful part of my garden. I'm not crazy about the orange. Again, it's God's way to kind of play a little trick on me because it's happened second year in a row that I'm thinking I'm buying a certain color and it's not the color and it comes out being an orange or a yellow. And I'm like, okay. And Jade's always like, mom, you cannot take them out. You, you, that's just not nice. I'm like, okay, I'll let them flower their little heads out and I'll just cut them and put them in flower arrangement, arrangements and just do that. So. Here's the poppies here. Um, they were all like in full bloom about a couple of days ago. These don't last very long, but they're still so sweet. This is the color I was looking for. This one and the white one. Look at how pretty that is. Just so paper thin and so sweet, so delicate. And then I have some pin cushions that are gonna be coming up. So this is gonna then slowly turn into kind of more of a all purple, all white part of the garden and some yellow. <laughs> and um, I have some foxgloves that I planted at the beginning of the season. We have one that started to, um, that actually is flowering. So she's really pretty. And I have that one. I'm waiting for that one to flower. I have now a dahlia that's going to be coming up. And that one is really gorgeous. That is an, a really pretty pink. So that's gonna be really fun to look at. And then I just cut this tree. So I made it more of a tree form because I felt like she had too many branches going off and I wanted her to look like a orange tree. She's a dwarf, no, lime tree. She's not orange, she's lime. So a dwarf lime tree. So I cut her and she has now one stem. So um, with all the fruit, hopefully that'll help push out bigger fruit. You can see some of the limes in there. Do you see that Jade right in there? I don't know if you can. And then my addition, which I love you guys. You guys should know I love chimes. And this is my tribute to Rogers Gardens because I always go and hit the big um, chimes there in their garden and my kids run. So let me, that's so pretty. And then here I have the hardy geraniums with the pretty Dusty Miller. And it's just a really just pretty color. It's so kind of a cooling because you also have the purple from the Mystic Spire Salvia. And then we have a volunteer here. So well, it's pretty, she's pink, yay. <laughs> and then let's come over this way. And this, this is a, I wish, I wish you guys could smell this. This is a lime lemon, mm, smell that. <laughs> a lemon um, geranium. It smells like, it's so fragrant. The leaves are so fragrant. It's one of my favorite, well, everything's a favorite <laughs> um, plants, but look at these beautiful color. Look at her beautiful flowers. So pretty. So. I think this year we did more purples. More purples, right Jade? Mm -hmm. More blues, sometimes a more p of a pink girl. So every year I notice like last year was a little different than this year and then next year is gonna be different, but I'm noticing like this year I'm leaning more with purples and more with blues and then, but then we have the yellow and the orange that pop up, so I don't know. Um, see purple, the lavender uh, topiary that I had to replace from the uh, lemon cypress that I killed the other day. And then we have my husband's tiger eye maple tree. 
and then here guys i love jade and i love sitting here i don't i know this isn't a plant but i'm just gonna tell you because it's i'm just really passionate about it we love sitting here i'll look up magazines to give me inspiration or i'll take a nap and listen to the birds and this is my favorite little part with my little monkey there our birch tree is doing really good so last year i thought i was gonna lose her but actually she came back just really you guys hear the dogs of course they always act that way when i'm on camera <laughs> oh now you guys stopped huh hmm so last year i thought i was gonna lose her but look at her leaves are so green of course i put her in the bigger pot this year um which was so hard to do i think we i lost probably like 5,000 calories. I never sweat so much as when we have to put her in there. Wow, that actually hurt. <laughs> and <laughs> the Japanese maple and then all the begonias down here. So I love all that purplish plum color. And the Japanese, I mean the Japanese, sorry, Jasmine is done flowering and she smells so pretty when we're washing dishes or looking out the kitchen window. It's so nice to just smell her. Um, during the, during the beginning of the spring, to smell the beautiful jasmine. Boy, you little furry babies. And I think that that concludes our, um, look at that, look at that beautiful tree, Jade. The Japanese orchid tree in the street. Oh, I think that concludes our garden tour. I'm gonna put up some pictures of what the garden looked like before all this. And I can't wait for you guys to get some inspiration that everything is possible. If I did it, so can you guys. So thank you always for joining me on this wonderful adventure. Happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful moms that have nurtured us, loved us, kissed all, all our boo-boos, um, taken us to school, made us lunches. Thank you, mom, I love you. And have a wonderful Mother's Day, my beloved friends.